Good time zone, everyone. Good time zone, everybody. Today's subject is cryptids. cryptids. What's a cryptid? What is a cryptid? Um, uh, does anybody know what a cryptid is? We should we should probably study this. I'm curious. Yes. What, a, what a, is a cryptid? A cryptid is a mystical animal that may or may not exist. That's right. It is an animal that cryptozoologists are convinced are out there somewhere. Somewhere. But that uh, traditional zoology says, nah. Maybe we not. don't know about that. <laughs> Basically, you're a cryptid. Hey, Nino. <laughs> uh, good to see you guys. Thank you all for joining. We appreciate you being here. This is Curiosity Chill, where each Tuesday at 11, a no, 10, yeah. 10, oh my goodness, 10 a.m. You yourself forward. 10 a.m. Pacific, we are studying whatever subject you all decide. So at the end of the stream today, we will poll together to decide what will we study on next week's curiosity chill i see some love for a bunch of you guys are shouting them out you know cryptids you know cryptids how about yes. these Ooh. we got a set of four and would you please let us know where you would like to begin our study of cryptids number one with the loch ness monster number two bigfoot or sasquatch number three yeti or the abominable snowman and number four the jersey devil there are of course Many more cryptids out there, but... These are probably the most famous. These are the ones that are getting the most hype right off the bat. Mm -hmm. And I gotta say, thank you to Pieces of Eden for starting our stream off with some very, very lovely group hugs. Aw, thanks, Pieces! Much love to all of you and Pieces of Eden. Thank you for your generosity. As always, I see Pop as well. Thank you, Pop, for the gift subs. If you guys got one of those gift subs from Pop or from Lyrelia or from Pieces of Eden, well, Pillow Cat, you know what to do. Uh, check out the starter <laughs> kit. We've got this awesome starter kit that will show you the way around the channel. Exclamation point starter kit in the chat. Deckard Lester has hooked you up. And if you guys would like to join us on our subscriber Discord chat rooms, Zen and Jericho. How you guys doing today? Good morning. Good, Good time morning. zone. Good evening. Doctor Who, welcome back, friend, for 29 months. All right, it's time for some mod love. I gotta say, mod love. Mod love. Doctor Who and Pillow Cat, and thank you to our lieutenants too. Thank you, Lyrelli. I appreciate you, mods and lieutenants, for helping us out on Twitch and Discord and making the world go round. You guys, the Loch Ness Monster is going to win this. All right, let's do it. Okay. Loch Ness Monster, then the Jersey Devil, Ew. Bigfoot, and then the Yeti. So speaking of moderators, our awesome mods are going to drop the links in the chat for you guys if you would like to read along or ahead of us or maybe even read it later or send it to a dear friend to say, see, <laughs> I told you there's a Loch Ness Monster. Hey, the Blind Bandit 85, welcome back for seven months. Welcome. Storm on the Moon is back for two months. We're having a great day. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. All right. If there's anybody in the world that knows about cryptozoology, it's this guy. I am convinced that we're going to learn a little bit of history from history.org. Com. This is the Loch Ness Monster article that our moderators are sharing with you all. And thank you to History.com for teaching us the history of the Loch Ness Monster. Just reformatting the page. <laughs> it's a lot of content to yeah, fit in the small go. amount of space. There we go. All right, here we go. The Loch Ness Monster. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like it. I already see. Oh, wow. Oh, you guys are sharing the same, the same. Oh, that's the article. <laughs> I was like, whoa, Zen and Jericho have the exact same gif of the Loch Ness. Mo no, that's, that's what we're reading together. <laughs> the Loch Ness monster is a mythical animal that allegedly lives in, wait for it, Loch Ness, a large freshwater lake near Inverness, Scotland. So Loch is how those lovely Scots do say lake. Do we have any friends joining us from Scotland today? Hey, what's going on in Scotland? If you are currently looking out over the loch, keep an eye out for Nessie. Ooh, silver apple stock is. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. All right. Well, there are accounts of an aquatic beast living in the lake that date back 1,500 years. All efforts to find any credible evidence of the animal have failed. That hasn't dampened the public's enthusiasm, however, for any news about Nessie. Good to see you guys. Hello, what's up? You just vibing? Good to see you in Scotland. Thank you for tuning in. Where's everybody else in the world? And do you have any monsters there we should know about? 
Loch Ness is located in the Scottish Highlands. It has the largest volume of fresh water in Great Britain. The body of water reaches a depth of nearly 800 feet and a length of about 23 miles. Scholars of the Loch Ness Monster find a dozen references to Nessie in Scottish history dating back to around 500 AD, when local Picts carved in strange aquatic carved a strange aquatic creature into a standing stone near Loch Ness. St. Columba. The earliest written reference to a monster in Loch Ness is a 7th century biography of St. Columba, the Irish missionary who introduced Christianity to Scotland. In 565 AD, according to the biographer, St. Columba was on his way to visit the king of the northern Picts near Inverness when he stopped at Loch Ness to confront a beast that had been killing people in the lake. Oh, seeing a large beast about to attack. If I do this, will it give us a picture? Nope. I just want a picture. Nope. I want to see it. There is no picture. I want to see it with my own eyes. Seeing a large beast about to attack another man, St. Columba intervened, invoking the name of God and commanding the creature to go back with all speed. The monster retreated and has never harmed another man. Wow, all right. Well, there's been Loch Ness monster sightings. In 1933, a new road was completed along Loch Ness's shore, affording divers a clear view of the loch. On May 2nd, 1933, the Inverness Courier, a newspaper, reported that a local couple claimed to have seen an enormous animal rolling and plunging on the surface. The story of the Loch Ness Monster became a media phenomenon, with London newspapers sending correspondence to Scotland and a circus offering a £20,000 reward for the capture of the beast. No. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anyone's going to successfully capture Nessie. Mm. After the 1933 sighting, interest steadily grew, especially after another couple claimed to have seen the beast on land, crossing the shore road. Several British newspapers sent reporters to Scotland, including London's Daily Mail, which hired big game hunter Marmaduke Weather Weatherwell to capture the beast. After a few days searching the lock, Weatherell reported finding footprints of a large four-legged animal. In response, the Daily Mail carried the dramatic headline, Monster of the Loch Ness is not legend, but a fact. Ooh! And Meggy Leggy, speaking of this walking monster coming across <laughs> here, thank you, Meggy Leggy, for this gift sub group hug. We appreciate thank your. Thank you so much, Meggy. Appreciate your generosity. And if you got one of those awesome gift subs from Meggy Leggy, check out the starter kit. It is down below the video. What's up, Cursed Fabian and Shepard? I see Lamia is here and Ivoli and MJJD. Welcome to the crew, friends. And thank you, Meggy. Daisy P. writes, welcome back for 33 months and what? having fun. Good to see you. And call me Lalisa. Thank you for the gift sub to Hug Mugger. So, Nessie, scores of tourists descended on Loch Ness and sat in boats or deck chairs waiting for the appearance by the beast. Plaster casts of the footprints were sent to the British Natural History Museum, which reported that the tracks were that of a hippopotamus. Specifically, one hippopotamus foot, probably stuffed. Mm. The hoax temporarily deflated Loch Ness monster mania, but stories of sightings continued. A famous 1934 photograph seemed to show a dinosaur-like creature with a long neck emerging out of the murky waters, leading some to speculate that Nessie was a solitary survivor of a long-extinct paleo. Plesiosaurs. Whoa. The aquatic plesiosaurs were thought to have died off with the rest of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. Loch Ness was frozen solid during recent ice ages, however, so this creature would have had to make its way into the river Ness from the sea in the past 10,000 years. 
and the, Pleio, the Plesiosaurus, believed to be a cold-blooded animal, would not survive long in the frigid waters of Loch Ness. More likely, others suggested it was an archaeolite. Uh, ar- Archaeosit. An archaeos. Let's ask the robot lady. Robot, robot lady. lady. How do we pronounce it? How do we pronounce it? <laughs> robot lady. All right, everybody. Stay tuned for whether or not robot lady can help us pronounce the thing. Hit it. Archaeosite. 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 More likely... Others suggested it was an archaeosite, a primitive whale with a serpentine neck that is thought to have been extinct for 18 million years. Skeptics argued that what people were seeing in Loch Ness were sieches. Let's ask Robot Lady. Robot Lady, what is this word? Robot Lady? Six. Robot. Six. Human. Sorry, I didn't mean to assume your gender. Six. Just, it's usually a lady. Six. Six. Okay. <laughs> Skeptics argued that what people were seeing in Loch Ness were six oscillations in the water's surface caused by the inflow of cold river water into a slightly warmer loch. The search continues. Amateur investigators. Oh, you want to keep going? Go ahead. Go for it. No, no, no. Go ahead. Amateur investigators kept on almost constant vigil, and in the 1960s, several British universities launched expeditions to Loch Ness using sonar to search the deep. Nothing conclusive was found, but in each expedition, the sonar operators detected large, moving, underwater objects they could not explain. In 1975, Boston's Academy of Applied Science combined sonar and underwater photography in an expedition to Loch Ness. A photo result uh, resulted that, after enhancement, appeared to show the giant flipper of the Paleosaur-like creature. Further sonar expeditions in the 1980s and 1990s resulted in more tantalizing, if inconclusive, readings. Revelations in the 1994 uh, in 1994 that the famous 1934 photo was a hoax hardly dampened the enthusiasm of tourists and professional and amateur investigators of the legend of the Loch Ness monster. Well, team, it looks like as long as people get hyped about something, they don't care if it turns out to be a hoax. Yeah, and it could just be that that Loch Ness Nessie is waiting down below the surface. Amy versus Amy. Thank, thank you for you the so gift much. subs. Appreciate your support, friend. Thank you kindly, and pardon my appearance. Thank you for the gift sub as well to Leo Kite and Re Three. Thank you for the cheers. Saying cryptids are so interesting. We hope you have a good weekend as well. All right, team. What do you think? Is there such thing as a Loch Ness monster, or is it just a figment of someone's imagination? Oh, let's do a poll. Should yeah. we poll it? Mm-hmm. Okay. After hearing all the the evidence presented, monster, real, not real. Number one in the chat, if the Loch Ness Monster is real. And number two in the chat, if the Loch Ness Monster is not real. Let us know what you think. And I'm, by the way, this will determine whether or not the Loch Ness Monster is real. I definitely do think that there was a very large creature that was living in the loch. Um, I, yeah, I, I do think that that's totally possible. Um, I, I believe it's totally possible. I mean, yeah. it's the biggest lake in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And it's fresh water. It makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe he, you want to manifest it. Everybody's manifesting this creature into existence. Well, mm-hmm. 70% of us are convinced. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that's enough to make it an official judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all discretions, let me tell you, Loch Ness Monster is real. real. All right. Nice. We love to see it. You love to see it. You love to see it. So, Amelia, Mm. uh, would you be so kind as to take us down the rabbit hole of our next cryptid? Yes. Pulled by you, dear friends, the Jersey Devil. 
어. 예스. 대 The Jersey Devil and Folklore. Tales and stories of the Jersey Devil have haunted the Pine Barrens for decades. The New Jersey Pinelands is home to miles of pine trees and sandy roads, but it is also home to New Jersey's most infamous resident, the Jersey Devil. Designated in 1938 as the country's only state demon, the Jersey Devil is described as a kangaroo-like creature with the face of a horse, the head of a dog, bat-like wings, Horns and a tail. Wow, sounds like me before coffee. <laughs> that is intense. <laughs> That's a kangaroo-like creature with a horse face, dog head, <laughs> bat wings, horns, and a tail. Okay. That's a whole lot of things That's put a, into one That's creature. a lot of things. <laughs> For more than 250 years, this mysterious creature is said to prowl through the marshes of southern New Jersey and emerge periodically to rampage through the towns and cities. Mm. Mm. The most widely held belief about the origin of the Jersey Devil is that Mrs. Leeds, a resident of East East Esteville was distraught when she learned she was expecting for the 13th time. Yo, 13? In disgust, she cried out, let it be the devil. The story continues that the child arrived and it was a baby devil. Oh my gosh, she called it. The creature then gave a screech, unfolding its wings, and flew out the window and into an adjacent swamp. Look at this advertisement here. Step right up, 19th and Arch Museum, caught and here, alive! The Leeds Devil, captured Friday after a terrific struggle, swims, flies, gallops, a living dragon, ten cents! Admits to all. <laughs> I'd pay 10 cents to see a I devil. I would totally pay 10 cents to see this devil. Um, countless stories have circulated describing the devil's escapades, raiding chicken coops and farms, destroying crops and killing animals. His presence has been seen and felt by many in at least 50 different towns when he emerges from his natural lair in the Pinelands and wanders throughout southern New Jersey, sometimes intriguing, sometimes terrorizing the residents. Poses were constantly formed to apprehend the devil, but to no avail, and at one point, as much as $100,000 was offered for the capture of the Jersey Devil, dead or alive. All right, would you guys join a posse to go find this Jersey Devil? If someone was like, join our crew, we're going to get the Jersey Devil, are you in or are you out? I want to know. Mm. You, all right, Kylie Stoneham will be in, mm. virtual's not about it. I don't okay. know. Like, really, it wants to find it, but not to kill it. <laughs> Absolutely, you guys would go. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think I would rather be the guy that shows up after they already found it and yeah, let yeah. me visit it. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm. think I want to be the one that disturbs it. Well, several reports of the Jersey Devil's death also proved to be inconclusive, and even the scientific community could not explain its existence. Belief in the Jersey Devil is quite real and based on records of concrete occurrences. Reliable people, including police, government officials, businessmen... Those don't sound like reliable people. I'm like... (laughs) Um, And many others who were so... Who so integrity... No. Integrity, babe. The word is integrity. I know, I know. There's a typo in that sentence. Okay. Um, It's supposed to be... Other whose integrity is beyond question. Okay, okay. So reliable business, reliable people, including police, government officials, businessmen, and many others whose integrity is beyond question, have witnessed the devil's activities. To this day, people traveling down to the Garden State Parkway or the Atlantic City Expressway reported sightings of something or tell stories of strange occurrences. Many continue to believe that the legend 
that the legend is still around, disturbing the region, and will continue to do so for generations to come. Oh, all right. Well, if you're into the Jersey Devil, it looks like there's some recommended reading here down at the bottom. You can learn more in The Jersey Devil by James F. McCloy and Ray Miller Jr. There's also Tales of the Jersey Devil and The Phantom of the Pines. More tales of the Jersey Devil. Team, Jersey Devil, real or no? Let's check it out. Jersey Devil. Mm. Mm, let me know what you think. Jersey Devil, one in the chat for real, two in the chat for not real. Let's see Whoa. what it gets. Hey, Pieces of Eden, thank you so, so much. Yo. Appreciate those 10 gifted subs. Oh, thank you very much, Pieces of Eden. And welcome to Krista Coulet, Virtual Speedbird. What's up, Mayhew? Welcome back. And Maximo, we got Krushna Cray and Thanachan, and we've got Epper's Hand. Thank you very much for being here with Siri Yakum Yamiko. Also to Vivi Evi and George5900. Appreciate you being here. Team, what do you think? Uh, this one's a little more split. You yeah. guys are much more down for the Loch Ness. Is it because of the hippopotamus feet? Is it because of the pictures? Why, do, why don't we believe in the Jersey Devil as much as we like the Loch Ness? Is the, the story is just not so... Yeah, what, it, so what about hype? it that makes it not as real? I think it's the description of it being like kangaroo with horse face, dog head, Yeah, it's wings. the mix and match you guys yeah. are not trying to have? I think that's what makes it... Um, you haven't heard about the Jersey less, Devil as much? It's because it's from New Jersey. Because <laughs> it's from Jersey? All right, well, I think that... I think we're going to have to call it on this one, team. Not real. According to this crew, Jersey Devil, bink, not real. Too weird. <laughs> Too weird. It's the business people who are being witnesses. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? We got Soft Goth back for nine months. Thank you for your friendship. We appreciate you hanging out with us. And who? that looks like Potpourri d'une Colette. Chouette. Chouette. <laughs> Chouette. Thank you for subscribing with your Prime. We appreciate you being here with your Prime. And Pop Cakey, thank you so much for the double gift subs. All right. So um, what do we got? Yeti or Bigfoot? I think um, Those yet. are the two options. Let's pull them up real quick. Where do you guys want to go next? We got the Yeti or the Abominable Snowman or Bigfoot, which is also known as Sasquatch. Which one would you like to study next? Hey, Lana Pumpkin, thank you so much for the gift sub to Vampire ex-girlfriend <laughs> appreciate you vampire ex-girlfriend do 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 it's gonna be the yeti yeah time to learn about the yeti yeti hit me with those yeti facts lead them away so this article is from live science livescience.com thank you again to our awesome mod team for spreading the information around the world and around the discord and Twitch. Beyond. Zieti. Abominable snowman of Asia. Okay. Wow. This is the Himalayas, Mount Everest. This is where you gotta go, team, if you wanna see the Yeti. The Yeti. Once better known as the abominable snowman. That is a hard word for me to say, by the way. Yeah. I always just kind of, I say ab ma and then I just go abominable. Abominable. Abom uh, th the Yeti, once better known as the Abominable Snowman, is a mysterious bipedal creature. Now, bipedal, my friends, who here in the chat can tell me the definition of bipedal? What does it mean? Two peds. Two peds. <laughs> Two peds. Mm. What could it be, team? Two feet. Two feet. We are bipedal too. Yes, creatures that walk on two feet are bipedal. Also, the definition of abominable is calling, causing moral revulsion. Oh, this creature is going to morally revolt us, team. Bad and unpleasant. With its two feet creature said to live in the mountains of Asia. It sometimes leaves tracks and snow, but is also said to dwell below the Himalayan snow line. Despite dozens of expeditions into the remote mountain regions of Russia, China, and Nepal, the existence of the Yeti remains unproven. 
Mm, well, we're going to find out together. We have some expert cryptozoologists here with us today ready to make their own distinction. The Yeti is said to be muscular, covered with dark grayish or reddish-brown hair, and weigh between 200 and 400 pounds, or 91 to 181 kilograms. It is relatively short compared to North America's Bigfoot, averaging about 6 feet or 1.8 meters in height, which is just slightly shorter than Chewbacca. Though this is the most common form, reported yetis have come in a variety of shapes. The History of the Yeti The Yeti is a character in ancient legends and folklore of the Himalaya people. In most of the tales, the Yeti is a figure of danger, author Shiva Dakal told the BBC. The moral of the stories is often a warning to avoid dangerous animals and to stay close and safe within the community. Alexander the Great demanded to see a yeti when he conquered the Indus Valley in 326 BC, but according to National Geographic, local people told him that they were unable to present one because the creatures could not survive at the low altitude. Wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In modern times, many Westerners started traveling to the Himalayas. The myth became more sensational. According to the BBC, in 1921, a journalist named Henry Newman interviewed a group of British explorers who had just returned from a Mount Everest expedition. The explorers told the journalist they had discovered some very large footprints on the mountain to which their guides had attributed to Metokangmi, essentially meaning man-bear snowman. Newman got the snowman part right, but mistranslated Mito as filthy. Then he seemed to think abominable sounded even better and used the more menacing name in the paper. Thus, the legend was born. Hmm. In her book, Still Living, Yeti, Sasquatch, and the Neanderthal Enigma, from 1983, Thames and Hudson, researcher Myra Shackley offers the following description, reported by two hikers in, the 1940 in 1942 who saw two black specks moving across the snow about a quarter mile below them. Despite this significant distance, they offered the following very detailed description. The height was not much less than eight feet. The heads were described as squarish, and the ears must lie close to the skull because there was no projection from the silhouette against the snow. The shoulders sloped sharply down to a powerful chest, covered by a reddish-brown hair which formed a close body fur mixed with long straight hairs hanging downward. Another person saw a creature about the size and build of a small man, the head covered with long hair but the face and chest not very hairy at all. Reddish-brown in color and bipedal, it was busy grubbing up roots and occasionally emitted a loud, high-pitched cry. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean that last one could just be a dude who got lost. Yeah. I mean, that, that, they're like, this was just a small man who was hairy and yeah, wasn't yeah. wearing a shirt and was getting some grub. Oh, uh, he stubbed his toe. <laughs> yeah. And he stubbed his toe. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to go for my shirtless foraging walk, and here I am, <laughs> stubbing my toe. Mm. It is not clear if these sightings were real, hoaxes, or misidentifications. Though, legendary mountaineer Reinhold Messner, who spent months in Nepal and Tibet, concluded that large bears and their tracks have often been mistaken for Yeti. Mm. He describes his own encounter with a large, unidentifiable creature in his book, My Quest for the Yeti. Confronting the Himalayas' Deepest Mystery. In March 1986, Anthony Wooldridge, a hiker in the Himalayas, saw what he thought was a yeti standing in the snow near a ridge about 500 feet or 152 meters away. 
It didn't move or make noise, but Woodridge saw odd tracks in the snow that seemed to lead towards the figure. He took two photographs of the creature, which were later analyzed and proven genuine. Oh. Many in the Bigfoot community seized upon the photos as clear evidence of a yeti, including John Napier, an autonomist and anthropologist who had served as the Smithsonian Institution's director of primate biology. Many considered it unlikely Woolridge could have been mis- could have made a mistake because of his extensive hiking experience in the region. The following year, researchers returned to where Woldridge had taken the photos and discovered that he had simply seen a dark rock outcropping that looked vertical from his position. It was all a mistake, much to the embarrassment of some Yeti believers. All right, do you want to see this photo, team? Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, let me get this photo here. I want to get the one we're referring to, the Mm -hmm. lure of the hunt. This is the the professional hiker, right? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. This is in the 50s. John Napier. Here, let's... I'm going to... No, it was... No, 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 that's not it. Uh, This is Woldridge. Woldridge, Woldridge. Anthony Woldridge. Anthony. Anthony Woldridge. Here you go. This is the photo. Yeah. The Yeti, part two. Show me the photo. Just the image, please. (laughs) Just the image. We have enough of your words, words, words. Open a new tab. Image. God, please, just let me sh- let me show my friends this picture of a Yeti, you guys. No, that's not going to work either. Hang tight. You guys, I've used the internet before, okay? I can do this. I can internet. You guys internet? All right. I have to consolidate it this way. Oh, God. It's just this part. There it is. This is it. This here. That's his photo. It was a genuine photo. But I I have to say, this looks a lot like that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are with me here? I mean, this is... That's... Is this a Yeti? Why would the Yeti be... Why would the Yeti be a shadow? Uh... I don't know. Let's enhance. See, that's... Yeah. That's not a Yeti. I mean, I could totally see how someone would think that's it. I mean, I get that the dude thought it was a Yeti. Mm -hmm. I don't doubt that he thought it was a Yeti, but, I mean, let's just talk about this. I don't know. I don't know. I need more information to determine the best approach. What do you think of this one? That one looks a little bit more convincing. It looks like a little more like a Yeti, but... Okay, let's talk about this, team. You're a Yeti, right? You're doing your life. You're living your days. You're not going to be... Like, this creature would not do well in the total white environment. Like, in a completely Mm snow-covered environment, we'd be looking at, like, you know, a polar bear... Yeah, something white. ...type thing. Like, why would... Why would a... Mm. I don't know. Or he's just a lost person. Just a guy wearing black clothes? Here's some strange... Let's go back to the article. All right, back to the article. Yeti. Yeti evidence. Mm-hmm. Give me more facts about Yetis. It's not clear if these sightings were real, but let's get down to our man here. So uh, I'll, it's, it's... I'll tell you what, guys. Reorganizing uh, these frames is cumbersome at best. Here we go. Here we go. If you're curious why we don't have cameras for curiosity chills, it's because I would get so lost with all this Yeti evidence. Most of the evidence. Here we go. Um, I read that already. Yeti evidence. Mm-hmm. Most of the evidence for the Yeti comes from sightings and reports. Like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster, there is a distinct lack of hard proof for the Yeti's existence, though a few pieces of evidence have emerged over the years. In 1960, Sir Edmund Hillary, the first man to scale Mount Everest, searched for evidence of the Yeti. He found what was claimed to be a scalp from the beast, Though scientists later determined the helmet-shaped hide was in fact made from a surro, a Himalayan animal similar to a goat. 
In 2007, American TV show host Josh Gates claimed he found three mysterious footprints in the snow near a stream in the Himalayas. Locals were skeptical, suggesting that Gates, who had only been in the area for about a week, simply misinterpreted a bear track. Nothing more was learned about what made the print, and the track can now be found not in a natural history museum, but instead in a small display at Walt Disney World. Oh. In 2010, hunters in China caught a strange animal that they claimed was a yeti. This mysterious, hairless, four-legged animal was initially described as having features resembling a bear, but was finally identified as a kivet, a small cat-like animal that had lost its hair from disease. Aw, honey! Show me a kivet. Aw, baby... I'm sorry, team, but did they read anything about the Yeti before they show? They were like, we caught a Yeti. Like, Aww. that's a small cat-shaped animal. That's not anything like a Yeti. Baby. A finger once revered in a monastery in Nepal and long claimed to be from a Yeti was examined by researchers in the Edinburgh Zoo in 2011. The finger... and Team, we're talking about... A, a finger, <laughs> uh, generated controversy among Bigfoot and Yeti believers for decades until the DNA analysis proved that the finger was human, perhaps from a monk's corpse. <clears throat> the Russian Search for Yeti The Russian government took an interest in the Yetis in 2011 and, an organized, and organized a conference of Bigfoot experts in western Siberia. Bigfoot researcher and biologist John Bindernagel claimed that he saw evidence that not only the Yeti existed, but also built nests and shelters out of a tree twist out of twisted tree branches. All right, team, if a man named Bingernagel comes to you and tells you something, you better believe him. <laughs> That group made headlines around the world when they issued a statement that they had indisputable proof of the Yeti and were 95% sure that it existed based on some gray hairs found in a clump moss near a cave. Okay, Bingernagel. Binder. Bindernagel, my new favorite word. <laughs> may have been impressed, but other scientists who participated in the same expedition concluded that the indisputable evidence was hoaxed. Jeff Meldrum, a professor of anatomy and anthropologist at Idaho State University who endorses the evidence of Bigfoot, said that he suspected the twisted tree branches had been faked. Not only was there obvious evidence of tool-made cuts in the supposedly Yeti-twisted branches, but also the trees were conveniently located just off a well-traveled trail and hardly in a remote area. Mm. Meldrum concluded that the whole Russian expedition was more of a publicity stunt than a serious scientific endeavor, likely designed to increase tourism of the impoverished coal mining region, Despite quasi-official claims of indisputable proof of the Yeti, nothing more has come of the story. DNA samples. In 2013, Oxford geneticist Brian Scott Sykes... And he spells it my way, which means this is a man of science. <laughs> uh, ...put out a call to all Yeti believers and institutions around the world claiming to have a piece of Yeti hair, teeth or tissue taken from a sighting. He received 57 samples, 36 of which were chosen for DNA testing, according to the University College London. These samples were then compared with the genomes, genomes of other animals stored on a database of all published DNA sequences. Most of the samples turned out to be from well-known animals, such as cows, horses, and bears. However, Sykes found that two of the samples, one from Bhutan and the other from India, were 100% a match for the jawbone of a place... 
place? Plasticine. It's a time period. Ooh, of a plasticine polar bear that lived sometime between 40,000 and 120,000 years ago. A period of time when the polar bear and closely related brown bear were separating as species, according to the BBC. Sykes thought the sample was probably a hybrid of a polar bear and a brown bear. Ah, would you like to go to the Pleistocene, Pleistocene era team? Would you like to go back and discover some, some gigantic mammals? Nah. You don't want to? Nah. I feel like you would enjoy the Pleistocene. I'd be afraid. Pleistocene mm-hmm. era. Too babe. dangerous, yeah. Too dangerous? <laughs> Not at Not all. Not at all? No, no, Are you no. sure? Road <laughs> trip. <laughs> American idiot, welcome back for 14 months. I want to be an American idiot. Oh, what's our favorite cryptid? I mean, right now I'm really digging and learning about this Yeti. Uh, The Bigfoot's got my curiosity too, though. Mm -hmm. Sasquatch, you know, gotta love him. Got it. So um, the two other scientists, Serwin Edwards and Ross Barnett, conducted a reanalysis of the same data. They said the sample actually belonged to a Himalayan bear, a rare subspecies of the brown bear. Their study resulted, uh, results were published in the Royal Society Journal, Proceedings of the Royal Society B. Another team of researchers, Ronald H. Pine and El Sirio E. Gutierrez, also analyzed the DNA and also concluded that there is no reason to believe that Sky- Sykes et al.'s two samples came from anything but ordinary brown bears Mm. and in 2017 yet another team of researchers analyzed nine yeti specimens including bone tooth skin hair and fecal samples from monasteries caves and other sites in the himalayas and the tibetan plateau they also collected samples from bears in the region and the animals elsewhere in the world of the nine yeti samples eight were from asian black bears Himalayan brown bears or Tibetan brown bears. The ninth was from a dog. Mm. I like dogs. But the believers were still undeterred. The lack of hard evidence, despite decades of searches, doesn't deter true believers. The fact that these mysterious creatures haven't been found is not taken as evidence that they don't exist, but instead how rare, reclusive, and elusive they are. Like Bigfoot, a single body would prove that the Yeti exist, though no amount of evidence can prove that they don't. For that reason alone, these animals, real or not, will always likely be with us. Ooh, team, you know what it's time for. Tell me the truth. Yeti, abominable snowman, real or not real? Type a one in the chat if you're convinced of the Yeti. And number two, if you need more evidence and you can't say that the Yeti is real. Let me know what you think, team. And I am honestly really curious about good old Bigfoot, so I want to take a quick gander at this article. Yeah, we got it. It's not too long, so I'm going to read you guys about this Bigfoot Oh, legend. that's pretty split. I do think probably my guess would be that the Yeti is a, um, a very large bear because the bears can stand up on their hind legs and look like a human. And uh, yeah, yeah, I could see where the, where the confusion mm-hmm. would be there. But I don't know, team. We're going to have to make an official call on this one. And it's looking like results are inconclusive. The Yeti might be real. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Moving along. All right. I want to get to this last one because this is the one I'm the most curious about. How the Bigfoot legend began. This article is on history.com. Thank you to our awesome mod team for sharing it with you. I'm going to get this article done and then we are going to pull what subject we'll study together on next Tuesday. In 1958, journalist Andrew Ginzoli of the Humboldt Times highlighted a fun, if dubious, letter from a reader about loggers in Northern California who'd discovered mysteriously large footprints. Maybe we have a relative of the abominable snowman of the Himalayas, Genzoli jokingly wrote in September 1st column alongside the letter. Later, Genzoli said that he'd simply thought the mysterious footprints made a good Sunday morning story. But to his surprise, it really fascinated readers. 
In response, Gonzoli and fellow Humboldt Times journalist Betty Allen published follow-up articles about the footprints, reporting the name loggers had given the so-called creature who left the tracks. Bigfoot. And so, a legend was born. There are various wild man myths from all over the world, says Joshua Blue Blaz, Blue Buzz, author of Bigfoot, The Life and Times of a Legend. In Western Canada, the Stasail, the Stasail's First Nation have the Sasquet, the supposed origin of the word Sasquatch. However, the modern U.S. concept of Bigfoot can be traced quite directly to the Humboldt story in 1958. People, people later go back and dig through old newspapers and stuff and find scattered reports of a wild man here and a wild man there. But it doesn't coalesce into the general discussion until the 1950s. Even though loggers blamed acts of vandalism on Bigfoot, Allen thought that most of them didn't really believe in the creature. It seemed to her that they were just passing along stories with a legendary flavor. Still, the story spread to newspapers all over the country, and the TV show Truth or Consequences offered $1,000 to anyone who could prove the existence of Bigfoot. A cast of a Bigfoot track obtained in Bluff Creek, California at the Bigfoot Institute run by Danielle Perez. Who is making the huge 16-inch tracks in the vicinity of Bluff Creek, Gonzoli wrote in one of his columns that October. Are the tracks a human hoax? Or are they actual marks of a huge but harmless wild man traveling through the wilderness? Can this be some legendary-sized animal? Once Bigfoot's story went public, it became a character in men's adventure magazines and cheap trade paperback novels. In these stories, he, for Bigfoot, was definitely a he, was a primal, dangerous creature out of the past who lurked in the modern wilderness. By the 1970s, pseudo-documentaries were investigating his existence and films were portraying him as a sexual predator. Ah. In the 80s, Bigfoot showed his softer side. He became associated with environmentalism and a symbol of the wilderness that we need to preserve, Boss says. Of big examples, and is the one big example is the 1987 movie Harry and the Hendersons, of which most of you used GIFs from today on Twitter. <laughs> which portrayed Bigfoot as a friendly, misunderstood creature in need of protection from John Lithgow and his family. So why has the Bigfoot legend persisted for 60 years? It takes on its own momentum because it is a media icon, Bush suggests. Just as no one really needs to explain that characters who turn into wolves during full moons are werewolves, no one needs to explain who a hairy man-ape walking out in the woods would be. It's just something that's easy to refer to, Bo says. That would be Bigfoot. <laughs> so team, it's time. Let me know. What do you think? Bigfoot? Sasquatch? Real or not real or not real? Let me know. Number one in the chat for real. Number two in the chat for not real. And Toby Pringles, appreciate you being here. Uh, you went to a cryptic zoo in Portland, Oregon, and it was awesome. That's so cool. Did you see any evidence of this Bigfoot? I don't know. For me, I'm voting real. I think Bigfoot, Sasquatch, he's up there. He's having a good day right now. Mm. I... You think it's a bear? Yeah, I don't think it's... I, yeah, I do think it's a bear. Um... Also, I noticed that a lot, like, in the 40s, that's very much when all, a lot of these stories became really big. Uh -huh. So it feels like uh, 40s and 50s is a little bit, you know, afterwards. But Before people always had a camera on mm -hmm. them every time. Like, now yeah. if, if we saw a Yeti or a Bigfoot... We could, like... Snap a photo. Yeah. All right, so here's a, here's a side poll while we're finishing this one up. You're in the woods. Mm. Bigfoot's over there. Eating some berries. Uh-huh. Minding his damn business, just doing his thing. Yeah. Do you take a photo of the Bigfoot? Or do you enjoy the moment 
with your own two eyes and just breathe in the essence and be grateful that you and Bigfoot are together. I would probably take in the moment and then snap a photo. <laughs> <laughs> you take in the moment and, and then, then snap a photo. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I like that Scree would befriend him and tell no one. Uh-huh. That's funny. Enjoy the moment. Ask You would ask Bigfoot for a selfie. That yeah. is, I mean, if you and if you had a picture of you with Bigfoot that in a be, selfie pose, yeah. I mean, that would be hard for any scientist to <laughs> shut down. Bigfoot has his own Insta. <laughs> You don't want to be stealing his clout? Okay, <laughs> fine. Okay, if you took a photo of Bigfoot, would you tag him? No. I mean, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well, 65% think that Bigfoot real uh, Sasquatch is real. Ding, 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 ding. It's official. We have proven once and for all oh! that cryptid Krista cryptid it all Krista. makes sense now oh my, my god. god cryptid Krista I understand now for so many months I was just thinking you were being cryptic <laughs> but cryptid now we Krista. know oh, my, oh god. my gosh hashtag mind blown hashtag whoa <laughs> thank you Appreciate you being here, uh, Cryptid Krista. What a perfect stream for you. Thank you for the five gifted subs, and thank you guys for helping us determine that Bigfoot is real, that Loch Ness Monster is real. The jury's out on the Yeti. We don't know about Abominable Snowman. But the Jersey, Jersey Devil, Devil is really not you real. You guys don't have enough evidence no. to, to believe that the Jersey Devil okay, is Okay, everyone, let's uh, pop have a pop quiz. Type one thing into the chat that you learned today on Curiosity Chill. Ooh, good question. We do these pop quizzes where you literally have to just say one thing you learned it's the easiest pop quiz <laughs> it's the easiest qu- quiz it has one question that's just to fill in the blank what nessie is real mm-hmm. there you go nailed it superheroes across the world <laughs> appreciate you guys oh you learned that the jersey devil was a kangaroo the whole time <laughs> Mo- that most photos for the yeti were debunked yeah, a lot of them. Mm-hmm. The Bigfoot doesn't like selfies. That the Jersey Devil is a thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. The, the... And that they have a horse face. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm convinced you all listened really well. Yeah. And you've all been educated. Would you say that your life has improved after learning these things? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I learned what Cryptid Krista's username is all about Mm -hmm. all these months later. Um, So now the question is, what shall we study next Tuesday together? What's it going to be? All right, type something into the chat that you are curious about. Yes, and Moogie Blue, merci beaucoup, and happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Moogie. Bon (laughs) anniversaire. Is that how I say it? Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux anniversaire. Joyeux. Joyeux anniversaire. <laughs> oui? Yes. Oui, oui. Ah, Moogie Blue, merci, merci. Aha, what should we study? Megalodons. Uh, we could put dinos up there again. Yeah. Um, uh, here, let's look up. Um, maybe we could do like, uh, oh man, um, Landmarks of Europe. Creek mythology is coming back around. Uh-huh. Um, whales we could put whales and jellyfish or just whales maybe whales mm-hmm. okay wormholes oh we tried wormholes you guys it got so confusing so fast mm-hmm. um mass extinctions yeah okay glaciers glaciers Deep sea creatures. Ooh, deep sea creatures. <laughs> Quantum mechanics. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. You think, don't want me talking about quantum I mechanics. Think, I think that... <laughs> I'm like, do you uh, I think it would be hard for us to uh, be very useful in that case. Uh, climate change. Mm, yeah. I think that's important, given that we are pulling mass extinctions, glaciers, and deep sea creatures. I'm going to pop up these five options here, and you all can let me know what you're most interested in of all of these. Also, a uh, shout out that every Thursday we are uploading three of our previous Curiosity Chills to our YouTube. So if you're not subscribed on YouTube, exclamation point YT in the chat will get you there. Thanks again to Scree for archiving all of those. Yo. And type a one for whales, number two for mass extinctions, number three for glaciers, number four for deep sea creatures, number five for climate change. What are we going to get into, team? 
And thanks again to our awesome moderators and our lieutenants. We super appreciate your help on Twitch and on Discord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's let it go for a few more seconds. Where are we going to study next time? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I'm glad we got to read all these articles, Amelia. Thank you for finding them. Of course. If you guys are ever curious what Amelia does late at night on Monday night, it's find articles for Tuesday morning. So <laughs> thank you, <Yeah>. Amelia. <laughs> it's deep sea creatures. Uh, looks like we could learn a little bit about whales there, but we're going to learn what's below the whales. Oh, gosh. We're going deep down in <laughs> the ocean. It's going to be spooky. Over 50% of you are hyped for deep sea creatures. So that's what we're going to study next week. I'm going to put it up here. So deep, deep, deep sea. Come on, Bri, just type all the words. Deep, you don't have to capitalize C like that. Creatures. There you go. He did it. <laughs> he put the word. Deep sea creatures next week. And now we have a little question for you. Um, where would you all like to raid? And Amelia, what is a raid? A raid is where we will all choose a channel where we would like to visit and we're all gonna teleport magically over to this other streamers channel together and when we get there let's shower them with a bunch of positive emotes and if you like what they're doing hit their follow button make them excited yeah <laughs> give them that hype i like also that we always claim that we're like we'll magically teleport there <laughs> yeah magic it's magic, magic. It's... it's not through the use of servers or browser redirects instead it's magic, magic. Type a one in the chat if you want some monster-themed digital art. Or number two in the chat if you want some sculpting streams. They are sculpting some figures of the uh, Ghibli? Ghibli figures? What's a Ghibli figure? Let's find know. out together. Guess que c'est? Ghibli. Ghibli. Ghibli is... Uh, oh, like oh. little minis. Oh, cute. Oh, those are super cute. All right. Well, let's go show them some love. That's your winner. Studio Ghibli, Studio Ghibli, uh, both please. You want both? Oh, these are cute. So, um, okay. Here, I'm gonna. Oh wow. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys cute. are gonna like this. You're gonna like this. This is the perfect crew for this. All right, sculpting wins the day. We're gonna go show them some love. Thank you to our awesome mod team for finding those such raids. And now it is time for us to raid. So when you get there, drop them some follows. Smash those uh, emotes all over the place. Show them some love, and we appreciate you guys joining us. We are going to be back on stream on Friday at this time. This is 11 a.m. Pacific, where we are going to be doing our live signing, finishing up signing all the Streamily signings if we can. And we are going to be playing on Saturday, House of Ashes. Ooh, Ooh if you guys like spooky, it is definitely spooky. I don't even know what kind of cryptid we're into, but we're definitely going into the crypts. Uh -huh. It's creepy. And Life is Strange, True Colors, Grand Finale. We're playing Chapter 5 mm. on Sunday at noon. That is one hour later than whatever time it is for you right now. We'll keep you guys posted if we open this streamily again. We have got some requests from people to do it before the holidays. And we just got to make sure that we're going to be able to do that. So we'll keep you guys posted on Twitter and Instagram as well as on stream about any upcoming streamily signings. And thank you to everybody who has ordered one. Um, shall we... Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Here comes the raid. My name is Brian. My name's Amelia. And this, this is, is our, our Twitch. Twitch. Have fun on the raid, everybody. We're coming with you in three, three two, two, one. Raid! raid!